my husband stammers in response to the insults from his affair partner. He looks like nothing more than a fool. And then he looked at me, as if asking for help. Kim, I mean, this is just um. Don't you remember? You, it was you who brought up the divorce, right? Well, yeah, but please, Kim, can't we just forget about it? Who said he wanted to divorce me because he got a girlfriend? Now tries to get down on his knees, begging for forgiveness. The scene is nothing short of comical. I had no idea that our surprise plan would work so well. Then I said to my husband, trying not to laugh, "It's your fault, you know." Well then, let's make sure you compensate me properly for the emotional pain I've suffered. Pale-faced, my husband crumpled to the spot. My name is Kim. I'm 33 years old. I was born to parents who ran a small theater company. As a child, I dreamed of becoming a stage actress. But as I grew older, I drifted further and further away from that dream. It is not that I lost my dream, but I longed for an ordinary life rather than the glamour of the stage. My parents did not force me to stay on the stage, and my relationship with them is still very good. I married my husband Zach six months ago. We didn't have a wedding ceremony. We've known each other for a very long time. During our eight years of relationship, we've had our ups and downs along the way. So, despite being newlyweds, we already have the atmosphere of an old married couple. However, Zach's behavior had been strange lately. I can see he changed his style. We've been together for so long that Zach never cared about dressing up in front of me, except for his work suit. But now. He started buying fashion magazines, wearing trendy clothes, and styling his hair neatly. Even though his fashion sense might still be lacking, he has good raw material. I couldn't help but feel excited, seeing him making an effort to dress nicely. Is he trying to please me? Hey, babe, what's gotten into you? All of a sudden, you look handsome today. Curious. I asked him, and then, "Huh? What, what? Nothing." Zach? He's flustered, clearly showing suspicious behavior. It's as if he knows there's something wrong when I mention his fashion. I was disappointed that it didn't seem to be for me. Right after, my infidelity detection switch, which had been dormant until now, turned on. He's had a few affairs before, mostly drunken one-night stands or casual flings. We've had fights, but somehow we always manage to reconcile. Perhaps it's because I've built up some immunity to that kind of thing. I'm not feeling devastated. I just felt a bit upset and sad. After that, our days went on as usual, and then, half a month later, it was Zach's birthday. We had plans to meet outside and have a fancy dinner. It would be our first birthday celebration since we got married, so I thought it would require some special arrangements. Some might think it's strange for me to make an effort for a possibly unfaithful husband, especially as newlyweds. But that's precisely why I had decided to turn a blind eye to a single act of infidelity, if it meant winning his heart back. With this thought in mind, I headed to the restaurant where we were to meet. When I arrived, my husband had not been there yet. A little nervous, I waited for him to arrive. However, Zach didn't show up, even after the appointed time. What a situation! I thought to myself. Reluctantly, I had dinner alone, as I had made a reservation. The food and wine I had reserved to celebrate my husband went to waste. I almost cried a little with emptiness. When I returned home, my husband wasn't there. I couldn't reach him for the whole time. Eventually, 
he stumbled home in the early evening, completely wasted. Where were you? We had plans, remember? Oh, um, I was out drinking with friends. With who? Yeah, with with friend fr with friends. His noticeably diminished IQ, perhaps due to intoxication, is unable to come up with a proper response. But we had plans for your birthday. Oh, oh um, I guess I forgot. My husband grinned as he openly admitted it. He doesn't even bother to make any excuses. In the morning, I had told him, "I'll wait for you at the restaurant," and yet he did this. We've only married for six months, and he's already shamelessly cheating. The next day, Zach acted as if nothing had happened and talked to me as usual. No apology. On top of that. He started texting and calling the other woman in the next room. I wished he would understand how uncomfortable it made me feel, listening to them through the thin wall. When he changed his appearance, I thought I could handle it to some extent. But now, with his blatant behavior, that feeling faded away. Time passed without any countermeasures, and then, to my surprise. He even ditched his company's party. As a result, I had to attend alone. As I was walking back home, feeling down, something caught my attention across the street. There was my husband with another woman. It wasn't the woman I had seen on his phone screen. I had thought it was just Abby he was cheating with, but could it be that there are multiple women involved? If it had been just a few casual flings. I might have been more forgiving, but now I finally woke up to the reality that I didn't want a married life full of infidelity. That night, I confronted my husband. Why didn't you come to the party? Huh? Was it today? Whoops, my bad. But you were fine alone, right? What are you talking about? Ugh. I said I forgot. You are such a hassle. Oh, a phone call. It's from my office. Let's talk about it later, okay? Of course, that was a lie. The voice coming from the next room clearly wasn't related to his work or business contacts. Yeah, right. Maybe I should leave her already. And it was evident that he was talking to a woman over the phone. Then a few months passed, and on Christmas Day. My husband finally told me that he wanted a divorce. The moment I had been expecting had arrived, and I faced my husband. Why? Hmm. Maybe it's the post-nuptial doubts or something like that, you know. As soon as we got married, I started questioning if being with you for the rest of my life was really what I wanted. I wanted to see what other girls were like, you know. But does that justify cheating? Oh, so you noticed? Did you want me to notice? I mean, it's easier for me if you were the one who wants to break up and tells your parents, you know. This scamback self-presentation continues. Actually, I recently met a cute girl. I had tried hanging out with a few girls, but this one is different. She's like my destiny. Seriously, she's incredibly gorgeous. When she asked for my number, I felt like I'm someone else. And guess what? She's the daughter of the company president, not some mediocre theater group like your family runs, but the daughter of a major apparel brand. Amazing, right? Seeing him in such high spirits, I couldn't help but laugh. Fine. Let's break up then. Really? Will you give me all the money though? Or、oh, sure, 'cause she's rich, and I'll be satisfied just cutting ties with you. Okay, but I want to meet the woman first. Can you bring her here? Huh? You want to meet her? Well, I guess I can't help it. Saying that, my husband contacted his girlfriend River, and an hour later. 
she appeared, and my husband escorted her inside. Welcome, hi. I greeted her, and River responded with a casual "Hey," and raised her hand. Seeing that exchange, my husband looked bewildered. Man, it's freezing today. It's been snowing. Yeah, they said it's the coldest wave of the year. Sorry, it must be difficult to find a taxi. Nah, I worked hard for this day, you know. My husband was perplexed as he watched me and River talking comfortably, as if we were old friends. R R River, are you sick or something? My husband asked her. Huh? Was my natural voice? River replied to my husband's question. No, your voice sounds pretty deep, more like a guy. Just then, River interrupted. Oh no, it's the same as always. River changed her tone to a more feminine voice. Huh? What? What's going on? Wait, do you two know each other? Seeing the confused husband, both River and I reached our breaking point. We couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> well, River is cute, but she's really a he. What? He? Then River addressed him in a masculine voice. Yeah, I'm totally a boy. Look, check out my leg hair. See? River revealed a glimpse of hairy leg from beneath his long socks. As soon as my husband saw it, his face turned pale. But Zach loves me just the way I am, including these hairy legs. Right, Zach. Saying that, River approached my husband and linked arms with him, exerting a strong grip. Wait, wait. What does this mean? What's happening? <laughs> Why don't you tell him, Gam? Oh well, <laughs> this is too good. I'm sorry. <gasps> All right. Yep. The truth is, River is my cousin. C cousin? Yeah. Since childhood, he has been performing as a female impersonator on stage. Not only does he have a slender figure, but his gestures are also perfect, right? So. So River is really a guy. Yes, and his main job now is voice acting, so he can change his voice too. Oh no! No no no! That's right. I got hair removal for my beard, but I've been careless about the parts you can't see. Yeah. <laughs> so, basically, once I found out you were cheating. I asked River to set up a trap for you. I knew your taste in women, so I prepared everything for you to cheat. And of course, being the daughter of a company president was a big lie. Exactly. We just piled up all the elements that we knew you would like. My husband looked like he was about to roll his eyes at our expose. But, 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 River, didn't we um? Kiss? Huh? That's like a fly landing on my lips. If it's for work, there are plenty of kissing scenes, you know. My husband groaned in bewilderment. So that's why you didn't let go beyond the kiss, huh? Then should we try it now? River responded with a grin. My husband's face contorted even more. <laughs> River, please stop. It's just too funny. By the way, you pay the full amount of compensation, right? Besides, I know you've been cheating with other women. Wait, no. It's too late for that now. If I had intention of starting over, I wouldn't have asked River to do something like this in the first place. But, but River said she's rich. That's why. Th this is a scam. She lied to me. My husband shouted, "You cheated, and now you are accusing others of scamming? You have some nerve!" Zach couldn't come up with the response to my logic. That's when. Well, 
since you made my cousin go through such a horrible experience. You better pay up properly. After all, your value is pretty much limited to that, you know. River, with the most menacing voice I've ever heard from him, uttered those words. His comment left my husband speechless. Then River grabbed my husband, who was kneeling on the ground by the collar, and delivered a heavy blow. That night, leaving my sobbing husband behind, River and I left the house. Since my parents' home was in another state, I decided to stay at River's place in the neighboring town for a while. A few months later, the divorce was finalized. My husband's parents apologized profusely, and strangely enough, they ended up giving me compensation as well. They said they couldn't contain their anger towards their son, so I graciously accepted. They were good in-laws, but it was a pity. My ex-husband was now seen by his superiors as a womanizing, incompetent man, and he was heavily distrusted. His boss was a woman. And the company had many female employees, as well as numerous female clients. As a result, he was systematically removed from projects, and it was only a matter of time before he was transferred to another department or resigned on his own. It served him right. Several years have passed since then. After the divorce, I became somewhat distrustful of men and couldn't bring myself to date anyone for a while. However, two years ago, I married a man who works as manager at an entertainment agency introduced to me by River. It brings me great happiness to have dinner with my husband every day, and to be able to bathe and change diapers for our one-year-old daughter. But he's a wonderful husband, who fully embraces being a hands-on dad. River has been worried about me since that incident, and seeing me now. He feels relieved. I am once again reminded of how fortunate I am to have such a wonderful cousin. As for River himself, it seems he has no interest in marriage. He lives happily with his two dogs and a cat. He seems to be in love in his own way, but he doesn't seem to be in a long-term relationship with any particular person. He is an actor. And I guess everything is a learning experience for him. Actually, he leads my parents' theater company now. He has honed his acting skills even further, and every time I see him, he shines brighter than before. Being cheated on was a shock at that time, but through the connections and encounters with good people, I was able to recover and move forward. In order to repay the kindness I've received, I want to fully enjoy my life. My boyfriend tricked me into accepting his gifts, not knowing that he had been shoplifting at multiple stores until, until the surprising turn. My father is a man for whom the word mild manners fits very well. I have never seen him angry or upset. Just a few minutes ago, he was laughing with me as he always does, and he was happy about my marriage. But he said. I don't approve of it. This engagement is broken. Get out. You, stay away from my daughter. The moment he saw my fiance, he yelled at him as if he had changed. The words that came out of my father's mouth were unbelievable. My name is Diana. I am a 30-year-old office worker. I rent a room near my parents' house and live alone. Thanks for your hard work, Dad. I called out to my father. Who is the manager of a nearby supermarket? On my way home from work, the building is a little old, but the store is well loved by the local residents. Diana, I didn't know you were on your way home. Good job today. I smiled at my father, who spoke to me with a kind smile. I'm bragging about my family a bit, but I think one of the reasons why this store is so loved is because my father's personality. When I was a student. I was a bit of a rebel. I would be cocky with my parents and say to them, "That's enough. Leave me alone." I was always saying like this. Who do you think you are? Even so, my father would say, "Dad loves you, Diana. So it's impossible for me to leave you alone." 
He always had a smile on his face. As I grew up, I was getting married to Noel, who I had been in a relationship with for a long time. Noel is three years older than me, and I met him through a friend. He's a kind person who likes to surprise me and send me presents on ordinary days. He's a very fun person to be with. Above all, his smile is a little like my father's. Noel gave me a proposal ring with our initials on it. It was a little big, so I am going to have it sized on my day off. When I showed the picture of the ring to my parents, that said, "It looks good on you. I will miss you, but be happy." I'm sorry I haven't been able to make time for you due to my work schedule. I'm looking forward to meeting Noel. I had never even shown them a picture of Noel because I felt embarrassed about it. Last week, I visited Noel's parents' house to say hello. His father was a taciturn man, and his mother was talking about herself. Most of it was about Noel. My son has always been kind to me, and Diana, you are a lucky girl. There's no better man than him, and don't worry, he has a good plan for your life, and has enough money saved. Oh, and by the way, I was completely overwhelmed by her blubbering. Hey, you've bothered Diane enough, right? You can stop bragging about your son now. My father-in-law stopped her and finally quieted down. I felt that he was a very powerful man, but I thought we would get along well. When I got engaged, my friends gathered to celebrate. One of my friends said, "Hey, did you bring the ring? Let me see it." Yes, okay. I haven't been able to get it sized yet. Ta-da! I showed her the whole thing. Oh, huh? That ring? Huh? The surprising remark made me want to walk away right then and there. The day came. When Noel came to my parents' house to meet them, but I had an uneasy feeling in my heart. Noel lives in the next town over and was supposed to meet me at my house before heading to my parents' house. However, I had to go to my parents' house first because I had received a call from work, and I felt uncomfortable. I waited for Noel's arrival with my parents. As I prepared coffee with my mother in the kitchen, she said to me. Your father doesn't seem to be in good spirits. I heard that one of our friends is going to close his store again. We have to work hard at our store too. My mother gave a small sigh. A few of my father's friends also owned watch and general stores, and they encouraged each other to do well despite the economic downturn. My father seemed frustrated at his friends who still had to close their store. Look, honey. If you greet Noah with a face like that, he will be worried. Smile, like you always do. Yes. Today is a memorable, unimportant day in our family. Well, Diana is getting married. Our family laughed at my father, who was already on the verge of tears. Then the intercom rang, and I rushed to the front door. I opened the door to find Noah standing there. Welcome, Noah. What's with the big paper bag? Did you notice? I heard that your father likes to drink, so I brought a lot of things for him, and some snacks and other things. I laughed a bit bitterly at the random items in the bag. Are these supposed to be souvenirs? When I went to Noel's parents' house, I brought some sweets from a local confectionery. I thought that was the way it was supposed to be. I was a little upset when I received the paper bag. Thank you. I'll show you my parents. They went into the living room. Nice to meet you. Thank you for allowing me to have a relationship with your daughter. Noel greeted my parents in a loud voice. I'm Diana's mother. Thank you for coming today. My mother greeted him with a smile. But then, go home. My father, who had been laughing with my mother and me just a few minutes before. Now turned red and glared at Noel with an angry face. What? What's wrong with you? He just got here. You're being rude to Noel. My mother approached my father and tried to smile. You mean you don't approve of this marriage? My father suddenly stood up at my words. Of course, I won't approve. 
this engagement is broken. Get out. Get out of my house and stay away from my daughter. My father was furious, and Noel didn't seem to understand what was going on. Did I do something to offend you? I think I just met you for the first time today. Noel seemed too frustrated. I've never met you in person before, but I know your face very well. What's in the big paper bag? What in the world do you have in there? My father's low voice echoed in the living room. Diana told me that you like to drink, so I bought it at a liquor store nearby. With Noah laughing, my father immediately started to make a phone call. Hello, good evening. Check the inventory right now. We may have some damage. After he finished calling a few places, my father glared at him again. I was still clueless as to what my father was calling about, but Noel's face was pale. I have one question for you. I run a supermarket near here. I get all kinds of customers. I'm sure you can tell me what kind of customers is the most unforgivable. My father said to him without hesitation. Oh, uh, a supermarket. Oh、uh, well, uh. Noel was shaken that he could not even speak properly. You really don't get it. Then let me tell you. It's a shoplifter. Both my mother and I were very surprised and upset when my father raised his voice. Bill's going to close down his watch store, right? That's because of poor business performance caused by shoplifting. Foster's General Store is the same. Some small stores in small towns are honestly just doing business out of the goodness of their hearts. Tell me something. How could you do such a terrible thing? My father stared at him with a complicated expression that was both of frustration and sadness. What are you talking about? Shoplifting and whatnot. I bought this property. If you say anything more stupid, I'm getting out. He said, threatening my father. The police came to our store a few days ago. They said he seems to be stealing from a small, privately owned store. The police are not stupid. They analyzed the security cameras in the neighborhood, and showed us pictures. It was unmistakably you, and in a criminal's hand was a large paper bag that looked just like that one. He pointed to the paper bag I was holding. Noel trembled and seemed about to run away. Get out of the way, old woman! He said to my mother, who was standing near the entrance, and pushed her away. Oh, what the hell! The next thing I knew, my mother grabbed him, and he was being thrown in the air. My mother is actually a martial artist. Noel didn't know what had happened, looked down on it, and then suddenly started crying. You're wrong. It was just on a whim. There are a lot of them, and I didn't think it would make any difference. If I stole a few, I didn't know that the supermarket was your father's store. Please. Forgive me, I beg you. Please just don't call the police. I don't want Diana to be the wife of a criminal. I was horrified that Noel still intended to marry me under these circumstances. I'm gonna be your wife? Are you out of your mind? Do you know what you're going through right now? You're disgusting. I never want to see your face again. I was getting emotional. Huh? What are you talking about? The watches and photo frames I've given you as gifts. And what else? Most of them are stolen things. You've been benefiting from them until now. You were an accomplice too. Noel laughed, completely revealing his true self. This ring. I heard you were nervous about buying it when you proposed. I don't know much about it, but this ring seemed to be a model from a few years ago. Actually. It was at a party, and my friend was drunk. Ah,、huh. but this ring is a design that was sold quite a while ago. I think it's discontinued now. I was so embarrassed and confused that I wanted to leave immediately. I still didn't know what to ask Noel. I guess Noel thought he would lead me into a trap. Look, you don't want to be an accomplice, so please pretend that you didn't notice what happened today. 
Your father wouldn't want the world to know that his precious daughter was with a criminal, would he? With sweat on his forehead, he continued to say these words as if he was negotiating with our family. What the hell have you been saying all this time? And don't call me father when you're not even married. I'm telling you, the police are here. It's only a matter of time before you get caught. And my daughter is not as weak as you think she is. Don't you dare make fun of her. My mother's grip tightened on Noel as my father shouted angrily. Ouch! That hurts, old lady. He started to lash out violently, but my mother was no match for him. I was so frustrated that I took out my phone and said, "Hello, is this the police? Someone is acting up in my house and has attacked my mother. There's also some stolen property. Can you please come right away?" I was surprised at how calmly I spoke. On a counter rally, Noel was in tears. Selling your fiance to the police? What a woman you are! I gave you all kinds of gifts because I thought you would be happy. Oh, that's why this is all your fault. He shifted the blame on me. <laughs> What? Don't be silly. I can't stop shaking to think that I almost became the wife of such a horrible person. Your parents must be devastated. As soon as I mentioned his parents. Noel's jaw fell open, and he seemed to have lost his strength. The police soon arrived and took Noel away. My mother had a big bruise on her side, and I cried and apologized to her. I was so glad you weren't hurt. She laughed at me. Noel seemed to have given up and agreed to be interrogated. I was also interviewed by the police, as I was engaged at the time. I learned from the police that Noah had been stealing from multiple stores for a long time, just as my father had said. It is surprising that even he does not remember the other crimes. It is said that his arrest was just a matter of time. Most of the stolen goods were sold on the internet, and the proceeds were used as living expenses. Noah was a man who did not drink, smoke, or gamble. But if I may say so. He was a bit finicky about money. His hobby was saving money, and he said he liked to see the amount of money in his bank book increasing day by day. The reason for his theft was trivial. When he was packing bags after shopping at a supermarket, he saw an item that someone else had forgotten. He was supposed to tell the store and hand it over, but instead, he quietly put it in his own bag. The feeling of satisfaction. An elation he felt at the moment was unforgettable, and he repeated the theft. The initial feeling of guilt soon disappeared. He felt superior to others. The goods in the paper bag he handed me were all stolen. The liquor was stolen from a nearby liquor store, and the sweets from my father's store. Even though I had not told Noel the location of my father's store, he would be the only one who would do something like stealing things to make as a gift. The ring he sent me appeared to have been purchased over the internet. To think that he went to the trouble of looking for a new unused item with his initials on it, I was beyond saddened. I went to see Noel in jail only once since then. He seemed to think that I had come to see him. Because I still had feelings for him, I knew you would come. I knew that you were the only one for me. My father and mother are both heartless people, and they told me they were cutting me off. Yes. How about you get me a good lawyer? I'll pay for the lawyer, of course. When I get out of here, let's have a nice wedding. Of course. I have no love for the man in front of me, who was smiling without any remorse. There was only disgust. I don't understand what you're getting at. I'm here today to demand compensation for breaking off the engagement. Noel's face turned red as I coldly told him that. Huh? Alimony? What nonsense! You've got to be kidding me. I'll never pay it. You're the one who broke off the engagement, so you were the one who should pay me alimony. He started ranting. I have no idea what he was thinking. But I was sure that I would never marry this man in the future. 
Why can't you understand that even a child knows that it is wrong to take something that belongs to someone else? I don't get you at all. There are many people in the world whose lives are changed drastically because of a selfish person like you. Your father and mother were crying when they came to our house to apologize. They were so exhausted. I honestly felt bad seeing them. A few days after Noel was taken away, his parents visited our house. Both of them looked pale and gaunt compared to when I had met them before. Noel's mother, in particular, could barely stand. We're very sorry for the trouble our son has caused you. They had originally planned to hold a dinner party for both of our families a few weeks later. But now both of our parents were meeting each other in this way. Everyone there was sure to have mixed feelings. The two of you have done nothing wrong. Noel is the only one to blame. He's an adult now, so he should take responsibility. Noel's mother broke down in tears at my words. I'm ashamed of myself for saying I'm proud of my son. He was such a fool of a son for causing so much trouble to others. Besides, I heard your mother was injured. How can I apologize to her? It's only a scratch. Don't worry. I think my daughter was hurt more deeply than I was. We can't forgive your son for what he did. But as my daughter has just said, he should take responsibility. At my mother's words, Noel's parents cried all the way until they left the house. Noel's father was nearing his 60th birthday, but he retired early because of this incident. Noel's parents decided to move to the countryside where they would not be seen by many people, not to avoid publicity, but to recuperate from the mental and physical exhaustion of dealing with this incident. Well, I'm going home. I stood up. Wait a minute. Are you abandoning me too? Noel cheerfully said to me. What do you mean abandoning you? I have nothing to do with you anymore. Your actions have betrayed everyone who believed in you. Don't ever appear in front of me again. Noel did not say anything back to me as I coldly told him off. He was later suspected of having a history of theft, but this was never diagnosed. He was also sentenced to prison for injuring my mother. His sentence seems to be short, but he has no one to turn to when he gets out. His life after his release from prison will be very difficult and lonely. Noel's case was reported in the local news. Until a short while ago, I had been elated by the thought of marrying without knowing anything. My colleagues and friends treated me as if I were a tumor. I am sure I would have done the same if I were in the same position. I felt uncomfortable and decided to resign from the company and help my father run the store. My father must have been very happy because he remodeled the store and enlarged the sales floor. In the new sales area, he put in a watch store and a general store owned by a friend of his. People who used to be regulars at these stores would stop by. They started shopping at the supermarket while their watches were being repaired. My father also looks very happy to be working with his friends. Once they were interviewed on TV, sales started to increase even more. Two years later, I had a chance to marry an employee of the store. This time, it was with my father's blessing. I wish I could say to my past self, who was depressed back then, your future is very bright and happy. With these thoughts in mind, I will continue to live in this town. Whenever he is annoyed, my husband completely ignores me and our daughter, but little does he know, I have a secret weapon. Did you bring in the laundry? Oh, shoot, I forgot. This trivial incident sparked a heated argument between us. With this mood soared, my husband started ignoring not only me, but also our four-year-old daughter. Amidst this tense atmosphere, I received a perplexing message from my husband. And what unfolded before my eyes was unbelievable. My name is Alexa, a 35-year-old full-time worker. I met Caleb, my husband, through a mutual friend during college, and we got married. After giving birth to my daughter, I took a one-year maternity leave and returned to work. Initially, 
had a part-time schedule, leaving the office before 3 p.m. But now my working hours are until 5:30 p.m. Today, I managed to finish work smoothly and leave the office on time. I rushed to pick up my daughter from daycare. Kia, honey. Mommy. My daughter ran towards me with a smile on her face. Seeing her joyful smile, I can imagine how she had a fun day at daycare. It's because of this smile that I can give my best in everything. Mommy, I learned a new song today. Saying that, my daughter started humming the song. Wow, you can sing it so well. This journey back home with my daughter is like a revitalizing tonic that heals my work fatigue. From there, it's a whirlwind of busyness with dinner preparations, bath time, and laundry once we arrive home. Hey, we're back. As I opened the door and entered, I noticed the living room lights were on. There, my husband was sprawled on the couch, engrossed in his cell phone. Oh, you're home early today. Yup, I headed straight home. Continues to focus on his phone without looking up. The sound of beeping and game noises fills the room. While I'm about to face a whirlwind of tasks, he seems completely carefree. Did you bring in the laundry for me? Oh shoot, I forgot. You promised to bring in and fold the laundry when you come home early, right? What's the big deal? I just forgot. No, no. We had the same argument just last week. If he comes home earlier than me, it would be nice if he could help with dinner preparations. We both work full time, but it's clear that the burden on me is too heavy. If I don't say anything, all the household chores fall on me. Even when I'm doing everything, he's always glued to his phone and doesn't bother to play with our daughter. Hey, Kia, stop it! While prepping dinner. I suddenly hear my husband's angry voice and our daughter crying. What happened? What's going on? Surprised, I rush over to where they are. My daughter clings to me, tears streaming down her face. It seems she accidentally stepped on the laundry that my husband had folded while trying to get a toy. It was unintentional. Don't be so mad. Well, if you have folded, why don't you put it away right away? What's your problem? I helped you, and now you're complaining. Helped me? What do you mean? It's only natural to share chores when both of us are working. Shut up! I'm tired from work too, you know. What about me? I come home and immediately start prepping dinner every day without a break. Enough already. Huh? <sighs> you're so annoying. With that. My husband retreats to his room. Your daughter, who had been silently watching our argument, is startled and starts crying again. I'm sorry, Kia. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I hold my daughter tightly. Expressing my frustration, I return to the kitchen. Despite dinner being ready, my husband doesn't come out of his room. I knock on the door. Hey, dinner's ready. No response. I knock again and called out. You hear me, right? With a sour expression, my husband emerges, walking past me without a word, and sits at the table. And he starts eating in silence. There it is, Caleb's silent treatment strategy. It's been like this since forever. When my husband gets angry, he ignores me, and he continues to ignore me. Until I give in and apologize. Kia, is the chicken good? Yeah, it's delicious, isn't it, Daddy? My husband doesn't respond. I was about to complain, but I don't want to argue in front of our daughter any further. Daddy seems tired from work, doesn't he? Well then, Kia, eat up. Okay. My daughter is obedient. Truly, my daughter's presence is a source of comfort for me. The next morning, my husband's silent treatment continues. Even when we say good morning, 
he doesn't respond. I can handle it, but I don't want him to ignore our daughter. It's really messed up to ignore such a young child. In the end, my husband continues to ignore both me and our daughter, and days pass like that. We had plans to go to an amusement park this weekend. The night before, my husband doesn't come home even after his usual time. Of course, there's no communication from him either. Hmm, <sighs> Daddy seems to be working late today. Should we eat without him, Kia? Okay, let's eat. I'm not sure if my husband even remembers the promise about the amusement park. But, but in the current state, going out together as a family wouldn't be enjoyable. That's for sure. Or rather, it's impossible to go out together if he ignores us. This time, it's fine for just me and my daughter to go. As long as I can make my daughter happy, that's what's important. Hey, about tomorrow's amusement park? Shall we go just the two of us? Daddy seems really tired from work lately. Oh, okay. Then I'll go with mommy. Daddy can't even talk anymore, huh? Indeed, her daughter also realizes that something is off with her father. Yeah, so tomorrow? Let's give daddy a day off and go together, okay? And, and we went to bed early. But I woke up in the middle of the night. My daughter was fast asleep. I reached out to the phone on my bedside table, and it was 2 a.m. There was a message from my husband that I couldn't have imagined. It says, If you talk to me, there will be a fine. Huh? What on earth is he thinking? And what's with the fine? My head heated up, and my heart raced. It was the pounding of anger. He ignores me and our daughter. Yet, he wants to impose a fine? I couldn't make sense of it. I need to have a glass of wine. Otherwise, I won't be able to sleep afterward. Thinking that, I walked to the living room door. And the light was on. My husband must be home. And there, he was lying in the living room floor in his underwear, sleeping and snoring loudly. So sloppy. Right after that, I was even more shocked. The floor a little away from my husband was soaking wet. It smelled odd. I was taken aback. Did he use this place as a toilet? I completely lost my desire to drink wine. I let my husband alone, turned off the living room light, and went back to the room. But even back in the room, my anger didn't subside. I can't live with a husband like this. Until now, I've given in for the sake of both of us. But now, we have our daughter. Soon, she'll start understanding things. For now, I can't show our daughter her father's disgraceful behavior. I have to escape from this house with my daughter as soon as possible. Around 6 in the morning, I called my mother. My parents usually wake up early and take their dog for work. My mother, who was happily walking a dog, answered the phone right away. Oh, what's the matter so early in the morning? Sorry, Mom. Can I come over there? Did you see the message I sent last night? Oh, sorry, no. I haven't checked it yet. By the way, what happened? Oh, well... It's a long story. I'll talk about it once I get there. I packed the belongings I prepared during the night into the car and left the house, carrying my still sleeping daughter. It took two and a half hours by car to reach my parents' house. When I arrived, both my parents and our beloved dog Poco were waiting in front of the house. I'm sorry for coming so early in the morning. It's fine. Anyway, let's put Kia to bed for now. Saying that, my mother took my daughter to the guest room. Kia, who was looking forward to the amusement park, would wake up soon. There wasn't much time. I summarized the key points and told my parents about my current situation. I couldn't tell my father, who is a man just like my husband, about yesterday's disgraceful incident. 
When my daughter woke up, she was surprised to find herself in a different sleeping space. But when she saw my parents' face, she immediately smiled. Wow, Grandma, Grandpa, Kia, you're awake. I'm glad to see you after so long. Today, let's go to the amusement park with Mummy, Grandpa, and Grandma. All four of us. Yay! Let's go quickly. Kia was happy, and I felt relieved. At the amusement park, my daughter was excited and having a blast. Considering the exhaustion of the past few days, I was truly grateful that my parents came along. My father and daughter were happily frolicking on the merry-go-round. While watching the two of them, I said to my mother, "Thank you, mom." What are you saying? Today, it's me who should thank you for such a wonderful day. Upon hearing my mother's words, all the pent-up emotions I had been holding back overflowed, and tears started to stream down my face. Every time my daughter, who was on the ride, came back to where my mother and I were standing, she looked at us with a puzzled expression. I desperately held back my tears, put on a smile, and waved at Kia. After that, we completely forgot about my husband and spent a joyful day with the four of us. Even without my husband, both Kia and I can have a happy weekend. The next morning, after finishing a slightly relaxed breakfast, let's go for a walk with Pucka. Kia was eagerly looking forward to taking a walk with our dog after such a long time. All right then, I get ready. My mother seemed happy too. As I cleaned up after breakfast and watched the heartwarming scene of the two of them, I thought to myself, "How peaceful! What were those ten days with my husband all about?" While Kia and my mother went for a walk, my father and I relaxed, drinking coffee together. Then the doorbell rang. "Huh? Did they come back already?" "Yeah, it's okay. I'll go check." Saying that, I opened the front door, and to my surprise, my husband was standing there. As soon as he saw my face, my husband shouted, "What do you think you're doing? Going out without permission? What about my breakfast? Huh? What's going on all of a sudden? Did you really come all the way here just to say that? Whoa! I couldn't get in touch with you. Oh, that's right." When I left home, I had blocked my husband's calls and messages. I completely forgot about it. My father, who noticed the commotion at the front door, was watching with concern from behind. Feeling a sense of security, I let out everything I had been thinking. What is wrong with you, really? Whenever something doesn't go your way, you completely ignore me, and you even ignore Kia too. What kind of a father are you? And what's with the fine? If I talk to you, it's just stupid and makes no sense. B- b- because you always complain, even though I helped with the chores. Help? Don't act so self-righteous. Your so-called help is minimal at best. Try switching places with me for just one day, then you understand. My husband hesitated for a moment, but his next words left me dumbfounded. That's right, you don't leave Kier's bed wetting as it is and go out. What? What is this guy talking about? Does he still not remember anything from that drunken state? As I was about to retort, I heard a voice from behind my husband. Oh, Daddy! Daddy can talk now. Huh, Kia. With our daughter's sudden appearance, my husband was momentarily flustered. What's bedwetting? Kia asked with an innocent smile. I panicked. Then my mother, who was behind Kia, held up her cell phone screen in front of my husband. On my mother's phone was a picture of my husband's big blunder on Friday night. Huh, this this could it be? What? Huh? Realizing the situation, my husband became flustered. Yes, I had sent the picture to my mother. Kia, 
sandwiched between my mother and husband, looked bewildered. Understanding the situation, my father spoke to her daughter. All right, let's go wash your hands. Come with me. Saying that, he took our daughter away from the scene. Truly, my father is reliable. Now it's time for a counterattack. First, it's my mother's turn. Caleb, you know, you are a grown adult. Have some shame. Well, well th this is. So I mean, but wait, is it really me in this picture? My husband sought help for me. Huh? Who else could it be if not you? Come on, delete the picture. I apologize for ignoring you all this time. I'll even pay a fine if you want. Of all things, my husband burst into tears in front of me and my mother. No, I won't delete it. Instead, reflect on everything you've done so far. I'm getting a divorce from you. Huh? Divorce? W w wait a minute, please. I beg you, don't. My husband continued to cry and scream. So my mother and I ushered him out of the front door. For a while, he shouted outside, but soon his voice faded away. Ah, what a relief! My mother and I exchanged a high five. Afterward, I entrusted everything to a lawyer, acquaintance of my father's, and the divorce was finalized without me ever meeting him again. He agreed to pay the monthly child support as per our demands. His parents, upon hearing the reason for the divorce, seemed utterly dismayed, making it difficult for him to even return to his parents' home. My biggest concern was how the divorce would affect the environment surrounding Kia. But she is spending her days with a smile at my parents' house. She's there with her grandpa, grandma, and her dear dog, Paco. If you take decisive action, things will work out somehow. With my ex-husband, who used to ignore me unreasonably, gone, I no longer have stress, and my work is going well. If I continued my married life with him, just the thought of my daughter being inconsistently ignored by her own father sends a chill down my spine. Once I've settled down, I will leave my parents' house and work hard to create a life for my daughter and me. I look forward to a future full of smiles with my daughter. My husband lied about his income to our son, making him disrespect me, and they both call me a pig and kick me out. I'll let him regret. Dad, how about we get rid of this pig? Kick out the pig that Anna brings so lot of money? That's what my husband and son were talking about. I decided to pack up and leave. Hey, why did you withdraw the money from the account? He said that, but it was all my money. I didn't come home for about a year after that. And when I saw my husband and son again after a long time, they looked at me as if they had changed. Please, please come back. My name is Ashley. I'm a 43-year-old office worker. My husband Brandon and I have been married for almost 15 years. Our son Harold is now 17 years old and in high school. Well, he is actually my stepson. My husband was originally married to someone else, but it fell apart soon after the birth of the child. After his ex-wife left him, my husband supported his son as a single father with the help of my in-laws. One day. He received the divorce papers, and he had no choice but to divorce her. A little later, he started dating me, and we got married. My son thought I was really his mother, since he was only two years old at the time. Brandon and I were deeply in love, and I also cared for his son. Now we decided to get married early and become a family. My in-laws have been very kind to me, despite what happened to the ex-wife and my husband. I feel like I can trust Ashley somehow. I mean, his ex-wife was kind of dangerous. To be honest, I'm not really surprised that she left. My mother-in-law said that calmly, and I felt she is a strong person. I thought that with the support of my parents-in-law, I would be able to raise my son without any problems. My son is fond of my mother-in-law, 
and she will be able to give me advice if I have any trouble. And so my married life began. My son was cute. My husband and I felt like newlyweds. We were very happy in the beginning of our marriage. My son was growing up well. My family was close. I was happy every day. My mother-in-law came to my house to take care of my son when I was busy with work, and we overcame many things by cooperating as a family. I thought I could live happily ever after. That's what I thought. But unexpected things do happen out of the blue, like layoffs. It was about ten years after we got married. The company where my husband works had a major restructuring, and he was one of many who got let go of. Damn! Why the hell should I get the X? My husband was quite shocked because he didn't think he was going to be laid off. Did you ask the company if they would reconsider? Of course I did. I asked them why, and so they said it should be fine because we both work. They said that since you work for a big company, we probably don't have to worry about the income. He told me that he was one of the people who got laid off. Because I work for a big company and my salary is high, I had a complicated feeling when I heard that. I felt sorry for him, but even so, I had worked hard to get a job at the company I work for now, and I had worked hard to raise my salary after I became an employee. Now I am working hard in a high position with subordinates, so I didn't want to look at it as a negative thing. But if your old company is in financial trouble, it might go bankrupt sooner or later. So let's look at it as a positive thing that you can change jobs early. I agree. My husband had a downcast look on his face, but for the time being, he tried to change his mind with my encouragement. However, when things go wrong, everything goes wrong. My husband could not find a new job. He tried to find a new job with the same salary as before, but he never found one. When I suggested that he try starting as a regular employee, he seemed to be frustrated. Do you think I'm an idiot? <laughs> That's not true, but it would be a problem if you don't get a job, wouldn't it? It pains me to see him having a hard time too, so I wanted him to find a new job and go back to work, even if it meant lowering his position a bit. I tried to persuade him to go to a few more interviews with various companies, but that didn't work either. And even the company that offered a lower salary didn't hire him. Gradually, my husband became more and more impatient. You told me to accept lower pay grade, but I still can't get a job at all. What do you think you're doing, making me write shameful things? My husband turned red and yelled at me. I was also troubled by such an unreasonable anger, but he had no other choice but to throw his frustration at me. He gave up looking for a full-time job and chose to work at a part-time job. Well, I would rather have him earn some money than have more conflicts with him, who seemed to be getting depressed. However, I wonder how much unfortunate events can happen in a row in the future. One day, my father-in-law suddenly fell ill. And died. It was so sudden that neither my husband nor I could catch up with our emotions. We rushed to the hospital and found my father-in-law already lying on the bed, covered with a cold white cloth. Dad, why? My father-in-law was a very kind man. At the funeral, I was so emotional that we cried. Pam, are you okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to worry you. I didn't think my husband would go before me. I always told him I didn't want to be the one left behind. He told me he would see me off and that I'll be safe. But at the last minute, he broke his promise. My mother-in-law was very depressed about the loss of her beloved husband. My son, who is now 12 years old and understands life and death, was very sad about it. I started to visit my mother-in-law regularly. I knew she would feel sad living alone. Ashley, thank you for everything, but I hope you are not overwhelming yourself, cause you look really tired. Oh, I'm fine. I'm just a little busy with work. I try to be strong with my mother-in-law, but the truth is that it was very hard for me. 
because my husband is a freelancer who works only 23 hours a week and does not take care of the house at all. So I have to work very hard and do all the housework, sometimes even doing overtime. My son is growing up and eats a lot, so I have to cook a lot of food. I'm hungry. My son does not know the hardships I have to go through, but he selfishly asks me to cook for his own convenience. I'll make it now, so just wait a bit. What the hell? You're so useless. Hey, why are you talking back to your mother like that? Shut up. Then do your chores. Has my son entered his rebellious phase? He started behaving badly toward me. I'm exhausted both mentally and physically. Hey, can you say something to him? Harold's attitude has been a little bit terrible lately. I talked to my husband about it, and he said in a painstaking way, "Most sons have that kind of attitude towards their mothers. I guess his attitude will change when he becomes a member of society, right?" He didn't take my side, so my son could do whatever he wanted. Mom, give me more allowance. I can't. I'm giving you enough. We、we'll、still have to make ends meet. You're living on my father's money. I was at a loss for words, and so my husband looking at me from a distance. In fact, he asked me to hide the fact that he is a freelancer from my son. He wants to maintain his dignity as a father or something. I don't mind it, but it's important to him. However, I thought that it surely has an influence on my son when I hear such a statement from him. My mother, who works part time and has a low income, is not much different from me. When I'm in high school and have a part-time job, I'll be able to make as much money as you do. My son said that and didn't listen to me at all. I was getting more and more stressed, and it showed in my health. I couldn't eat with my son and husband, who eat a lot because I had to cook for them first. So I fed them both and then ate my share. This meant that I had to eat a little later at night, and the stress made me gain weight easily. I found myself gaining two pounds, five pounds, and then twenty pounds in six months. I wasn't fat, but I was a little plump. But my son and husband started to tease me, calling me a pig. You have no self-control, Mom. Please don't come to my class. It's embarrassing. My son became more and more brash in junior high, and it was my husband's fault. Hey, why do you have the latest gaming console? I got it for him because he asked for it. Where did you get the money? I took it out of her shared account. Why did you do that? What do you care? It's our money, and as his father, it's my way of bonding with him. Buying him things is how you bond with your kid. What kind of thinking is that? Shut up. If we play games together, we're spending quality time together, right? Don't make a big deal out of it. What you should care about is your own body shape. After that, my husband bought something for my son whenever he asked for it. Because he begged me, but I didn't buy him anything. My son started to beg my husband all the time. My son's begging made my husband feel better, and he would buy him anything he wanted. But the money came from our shared account. He has been putting some of the money into the account. But it is running out at a tremendous pace, and it seems that even the money I am putting into the account will be used up if I don't do something. When my son became a high school student, my husband bought him expensive wallets and brand name clothes, probably to lie to my son. If we bought him more expensive things, he would not think that he was a freelancer. However, the money that my husband has in our joint account is running low. I am covering all the living expenses. My husband is completely lacking in this area, but he still buys things for our son with the money in the shared account. This is how he manages his money. He has no intention of bringing more money into the house. My father-in-law passed away a few years ago, and my mother-in-law passed away last year. My husband received his share of the inheritance at the time of their passing, but to be honest. It was not that much, so if my husband continued to spend money at the rate he is now, the money will eventually run out. 
my son will also want to go to college, so he will have to pay for it. I was very worried if we will be able to make it under such a situation. It was at that time. One day, my son said he wanted a watch that cost several hundred dollars for his birthday. A high school student should not have to carry such a thing. And yet, my husband says, "All right, buy one for yourself too, Dad. Let's get the same brand for both of us." I've reached the end of my patience. Enough! Why would a high school student wear such an expensive thing? Don't waste your money. We can't afford it. I raised my voice, and my husband's eyes widened, and he got angry. What? Are you talking back to your own husband? And my son agreed with my husband. That's right. You're just a pig who's rely on dad's money. When Harold started to make fun of me, my husband joined in. You're such an ugly pig. Dad, why don't you get rid of this pig? She don't even make enough money. I agree. Let's kick out the low income pig then. I can't stand it. I don't know why I have to be treated like this. I've decided to pack up and leave. The rest is yours to do with, as you please. Well, I don't think you can afford to do that. As I'm packing my bags, my husband and son are grinning. Now there won't be any naggings. I didn't dare to say anything back to them, but just kept silent and packed my bag and left the house. I stayed at a hotel for the time being and withdrew money from my bank account as soon as the next morning. It was the money I had put into the share account. About a week later, I guess, my husband kept calling me that I was so annoyed, but I didn't like it if he called me at work, so I decided to answer the phone. Oh, hey, why did you withdraw all the money from the account? Give me back my money, you thief! My husband suddenly shouted over the phone. It's all my money. You're mistaken. The money in the shared account isn't the only way you put in. There's also the money I've been putting in every month, and I don't want you to use it without my permission. I withdraw what I put in, so the balance is what you've been putting into it and spending. If there's nothing left, then you have spent all your savings. Oh no! Actually, come back. I hung up the moment he said that, and immediately blocked his number. You should know how hard it is to be without me. I didn't come home for about a year after that. I got tons of messages from my husband and son during that time. Apparently, after a few months, my husband's part-time salary was no longer enough to support themselves. My son also noticed that their life had suddenly become poorer and questioned my husband. He finally confessed, and from then on, he and my son both tried desperately to get me. To come back, I rent an apartment near my office to make it easier for me to get to my office, and put more effort into my work than ever before. Thanks to this, I was able to successfully complete a big project. After a year of smooth sailing at work, I decided to meet my husband and son for a break. When I saw them again for the first time in a long time, they both looked different and hang on to me. Their clothes were in tatters. And their hair was a mess. My husband and son had lost a lot of weight since the last time I saw them, as if they had not been eating properly. They looked really scrawny. By the way, I too have lost 20 pounds in the past year, and I am back to my former weight. But I have hardly changed my diet at all, and I lost the weight just by being away from my husband and son, reducing my stress, and getting a moderate amount of exercise. Please, I beg you, please come back. My husband got down on his knees. I came to see you today to formally demand a divorce. My husband and son turned pale when I said that. Wait, if we get divorced, we'll be living in the streets. That's right. I sold everything I had ever worn, even my brand name clothes, to pay for lunch for a month. I can't stand the thought of being poor. I don't know about that. You've been abusing me and treating me like a slave. I'm sick of you, and I've realized that I don't need you in my life, so I'm cutting you off completely. I said this, 
and my son said with a start, "Then, pay child support. If you and Dad get divorced, you're gonna have to pay child support, right?" The son said, and the husband took advantage. Since you make more money than me, I'll divorce you if you pay child support every month. He looks very proud of himself, as if he has come up with a brilliant idea. But neither he nor my son seem to know what's important. I'm sorry, but I'm not obligated to pay child support. Huh? Because Harold and I are not blood related. Harold's eyes widen. Oh, my God! You're. You're the son of a woman from your father's previous marriage. Your real mother died shortly after you were born. Then you lived with your grandparents. Then I married your father when you were two. So, you and I were not related, and I'm not obligated to pay child support in the event of a divorce. No, I raised you as if you were my real son, but I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving this man. And I'm cutting you off, and we'll be strangers. Both Harold and my husband turn pale at my words. I want you to write the divorce papers now, but if you can't, we will have to go to court through a lawyer at worst. Go to court? We don't have that kind of money. Then sign the divorce papers. My husband reluctantly signed the divorce papers. I filed the divorce papers at the city office and officially divorced my husband. My ex-husband is now working part-time jobs until he is exhausted to pay Harold's tuition and our there and their expenses. However, my son seems to have a great dislike for my ex-husband because he lied to him. And there is also the shock of me not being his real mother, so the relationship between the two of them is at its worst. I still receive messages from both of them asking me to help them, but I ignore them. I hope my son will take this opportunity to look at himself and change his personality. As for my ex-husband, I hope he goes to hell. I'm working hard today with these thoughts in my mind. I'm going to put love and marriage aside for a while and aim to achieve more results in my work.